Hello, I'm John Logan. I'm from County Leitrim and I'm delighted to see this show because quite a few of the photographs uh, were taken in County Leitrim in places that I know quite well. Uh, it's wonderful to see Martin Parr uh, getting such a great outing here. Uh, Parr, I think, has been a huge inspiration to a lot of photographers, uh, particularly uh, because he is an encourager. He sees that as part of his job. He's a great teacher. From my point of view, as a historian, uh, it is accurate photography. There's nothing contrived. Everything about these photographs, to me, seems authentic. And not just as records of particular events or places, but I do think he has caught that elusive sense of psychology. He's brought us, I think, closer to the minds of those he photographs. This is a major exhibition of um, Martin Parr's work. Born in 1952 in the south of England. He came to live in Ireland in 1978 and I'd like to concentrate on a few photographs from that time just to, I suppose, expose or present a personal view of a major artist. Uh, I'll start with this one here. It's the Mayflower Ballroom from Shambo and the year is uh, 1979. Martin is only a few months in the country. He lives close by in County Roscommon. It's Sunday night and dances in this part of Ireland were held on a Sunday night. The Mayflower opened in 1960, uh, so it was almost 20 years old and it only survived for another five. Uh, the ballroom phenomenon was quite extraordinary. It, had a flourishing of about 25 years, and then it disappeared. The lucky ones came in these cars. I think the car actually is hugely important. It was the arrival of the car into rural Ireland, which only really happened in the 60s, uh, that allowed uh, youngsters to travel away from home, and that was hugely important places like this. Well we're inside the dance hall now and we're up on the balcony and you can see the name Mayflower in reverse uh, done out in wrought iron inhabited by a lone couple and they're surveying the scene below. I reckon it's about maybe 11 o'clock at night and the dance is really coming to a to its head, to a climax. There's a major show band on stage, I don't know the name of it, but what we get is a terrific sense of the segregation. These are all men standing on the men's side of the dance hall, and these are women standing or sitting, uh, surveying what's going on below. And of course this segregation on either side, is, it replicates what earlier in the day they would have experienced in church, the men's side and the women's side. The way things happened at the time was that they've removed themselves, they've climbed up the stairs, there were probably very few others in this balcony, and I would say they're probably at a fairly advanced stage of courtship. Uh, you know, Two years before, they were probably down in the body of the hall. Now they've removed themselves. They, they could sit there all night and maybe only venture down on the floor for one or two dances. So he's looking sideways at her. He's very serious. He has very clear intentions. Uh, he's treating this as a serious business. It's harder to know what she thinks. Uh, she appears to be slightly indifferent, more interested in her lemonade than anything else. At the same time, she's slightly leaning towards him. He's leaning much closer. Uh, 
I have a hunch that this time next year that couple will be up on the balcony. All going well. Two more semi-private spaces away from the dance floor. This is, of course, the gents. And these three lads, very young, 18, 19 at the most, lined up inside, getting ready to hit the floor. Grooming themselves, preening themselves. This is a very different type of uh, uh, moment. These two women are, may not be much more, you know, five or six years older than these lads, uh, but in relative terms, that's a huge gap. And we can see the gap in the way they're dressed. Unlike the boys, the two women here are women. These are still boys. But unlike them, these are the clothes that they chose to wear. These were not bought for them by their mothers, whereas these were. I don't know whether they judged the night a success or not, but I think they made, they had much more control, I think, than these lads. These lads are going to be carried along. I think these women have some degree of agency. This is one of the first photographs that uh, Martin Parr took when he, after he came to Ireland. The year is 1979, 42 years ago. The place is Ruski Namona, lyrical names suggesting a boggy, marshy place, poor enough countryside. It's outside Mohol, the village or the town of Mohol. Uh, close to the Roscommon Longford Leitrim border. The occasion is the sale of cattle stock. The owner, this man here with the cap, his name is Mick McGuinness. He's retiring from farming and he's selling off his stock. He has hired this man here, Harry McGowan, to act as auctioneer. The auctioneer's job is to get the best possible price for the livestock. These three men are the main players, so to speak, apart from the cattle, and they're in this enclosed yard, a pig's part of a pigsty, part of a pig house, next door to the actual farmhouse. So it's a very convenient place in which to uh, secure the cattle and themselves and the audience don't uh, crowd in on them. The audience, a mixture of people. Uh, Neighbours coming to wish Mick the best of luck in his sale. Others simply they have nothing else to do. It's a way of passing a morning. Uh, but also, of course, most important, a few people who are keen to buy and hopefully it will give a good price. And they're all men. Women wouldn't have come in 1979 to an event like this. Some of these men might have said to their women folk, it's no place for a woman. Certainly, that's a phrase they would have heard at different times. I was talking to the auctioneer's daughter, who has now taken over the auctioneer business, and she conducts sales like this, some that really would have been unthinkable. These men wouldn't have trusted a woman to sell their livestock. That would have been unthinkable in 1979. 
She told me that if she was conducting such a sale today, that it would be quite likely that not only would some of the spectators be women, but indeed some of the main players, the buyers or the sellers, might well have been women farmers.